Hi, Jamie here, the Hedge Teacher. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, not so long ago, we were told that if we worked hard all our lives, saved hard all our lives, that we would have a happy, fulfilled retirement. Our medical expenses would be taken care of. We would have money for food and to spend time with our grandchildren. But sadly, that story is not going to come true for a lot of people around the world. Most people who have retired already, and a lot who are about to retire, realise they don't have enough money for their retirement. We're living longer. The cost of living is increasing year by year. They're finding out that the money will run out before they do. This is why it is important to save for a rainy day. And this is what I'll be sharing with you today. Rainy day and the rainy day fund. Now, saving for the rainy day is a phrase we've become used to. In fact, it's become a working slogan for finance management. We've seen it on the ads, on the TV, on the hear it on the radio, it's even in the newspapers. Without a doubt, it's good to keep funds aside for a rainy day. The time of unexpected happenstance that triggers the need for emergency funds. Well, it's one thing to put funds aside for the rainy day and another thing to do it the right way. It's important to say up front that saving is the language of money burners. You ask why? Have you realised that you keep running back to your savings to borrow some funds from time to time, promising yourself that you will definitely replace it, but eventually never do? There will always be the need to fall back on the so-called savings, including the fixed savings that shouldn't be touched until a certain time frame. The one that you may call the fixed deposit. So the cycle continues, almost never ending, until you learn to be an investor instead. For the purpose of emergencies, and especially for individuals who are still struggling to break free from financial shackles, you should save for that rainy day. And by the way, becoming financially intelligent is not an unattainable goal. With some expert coaching and practice, you will surpass your expectations in no time. Because of the instability of the fiat currency, you can never trust the value of your money. You may spend years and years putting money away for your retirement, only to have your country enter into an economic depression, and the value of your money is essentially useless. It's, it's gone. So saving long term is proving to be well, not the best idea overall. You're still going to need to have some money put away for that rainy day. Plan to, to save an amount that you can survive on for, for six to eight months. If you suffer or you have some kind of financial misfortune, such as a loss of job or the business fails, um, you know, can your rainy day savings cater for you and your family for at least six to eight months, depending on when you bounce back? If not, you know, you'll be in for a tough time. But don't put all your trust in your savings. The banks, where your money is at the moment, are squeezing you more and more every day. I received a letter from the bank the other day stating that they're they changing my interest rates for my savings. I said, okay, you know, great, let's have a look. 
They said, please turn over the page to see what it is. And down the bottom there, 0.00%. So from a lot of the banks, you're getting nothing for your money. But the bank charges are still coming out. And inflation, inflation, the silent robber is taking 3 to 7% every year. Every year. The more money governments are printing, the value of your dollar decreases. We see it as rising prices, not the other way around. Now, when you have a coin, this is a big coin, yeah, you have three sides to that coin. Now, this is from Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad fame. You have heads, you have tails, and then you have the edge. You have the right side, then you have the wrong side, and then to stand on the edge, you must be financially intelligent. We all have to increase our financial intelligence because no one else is going to do that for you. I recommend this book by George S. Clayson, The Richest Man in Babylon. He talks about paying yourself first. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons for this, but let's just let's have a little look and see how he suggests these. This way, he says, is that when you put this money away first, it is for your future. So as an example, say you get paid $1,000 per month, or euros, or pounds, or whatever. Some will get paid a lot more, some even less. Just use this as an example. You pay yourself $300 first. Put that away as an investment or short-term savings. You're left with $700. Now, your remaining bills and your living expenses come up to $900. Now, you must think of ways to create more dollars. Legally, of course. And we will go into that in other videos. But you are forced, as they say, forced to, and I say Tira is a great motivator to find this extra money. But with that $300 every month, and of course it can be a lot more, over 12 months that is $3,600. And that is a great start for you being financially free and increasing your financial intelligence. Then you can invest in something that will yield you some extra dollars. On the least, not lose your value of the dollar. Short-term investments, where you can get your money out relatively quickly, or investing in gold and silver. Do your homework. Seek legal and accounting advice when you need to. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor. I am sharing with you the information that I've had to learn because I believed in the system. Now, that when you have your money in your property, know that your house is not your asset. Remember, assets put money into your pocket. Liabilities, take them out. If you're paying off your house, it is an asset to the bank. It is always on their books. When your house is paid off, you still have payments. They have to be made like rates, water, electricity, taxes, etc. Do you think that if you don't pay them, they'll let you keep your house and to just stay there? How? No. They will take it off you as quick as they can. And we've seen that so many times. No, that real estate the word is from the Spanish word real, meaning royal, royal estate. It always belongs to them. If you have a rental property, then that is a different matter altogether. 
they will hopefully be bringing money into your pocket that will be an asset. Now, integrate the emergency fund into your budget. You're probably frowning at the sound of a budget, which is why financial mess is always a reoccurring incident. It must, if you must be a good money manager and ultimately be an end view investor, you must learn to set budgets and to stick to them. And setting a budget isn't an uphill task as some of those financial professors make it look and sound. Your regular pen and paper will do the job just fine. Or a bit of tech tool such as a spreadsheet. You really don't need any high sounding expensive budgeting tool or software program. Although there are many apps now available for you to help with this. Start with a smaller amount. For a lot, trying to save a big chunk of your income from the onset may put a lot of pressure on you, especially if you have huge responsibilities. So start with a portion of your income that you won't struggle to keep up with. Or, if you need to, think of ways to increase it like we talked about before. But ensure that you are consistent. With time, you can gradually increase your rainy day fund amount. And be wise where you're choosing where to keep your emergency funds. Get smarter when it comes to saving so that your money is not just lying dormant. The truth is, money never lies dormant, as you're made to believe. Your money in the bank is working and yielding more money, whether or not you share in that yield. Simply put, save your funds where they will yield more money for you as an interest, no matter how small. And invest. Before, as we talked about, invest your rainy day funds. Okay, you put money away in a traditional savings account and you're getting some peanut interest that is certainly not appropriate to your money worth. Once the fund grows to an investable amount, don't hesitate to pull it out and invest it in a better interest yielding venture so you get a decent return on your investment. And better still, contact me and I'll tell you about the gold and the silver. Look, learn, study as I've had to do for myself and for my family. There is so much information available for you now. Just please be careful and do your research. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So be careful. Look and listen and see how you actually feel about it. To increase your financial intelligence. There are many books, many available, but I recommend these books. Yeah, The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. And there's many other books out there. But also the Uncle Eric series by Richard J. Maybury. This is the second edition. If you're interested in unbiased, propaganda-free information about our history, the world history, and open minded enough to read the full series, then this is for you. This sort of thing should be taught in our schools. Here, he also underlines the common law, the old law, that I think we should all live by, bring ourselves back to. The two rules, number one, do all you have agreed to do. And number two, do not encroach on other persons or their property. If you have enjoyed this video and want to see more, please like, share and subscribe. We all have to hedge our own future. If we don't look after ourselves, no one else will. Until next time, this is Jamie at The Hedge Teacher.